Holland, a plain lying just below sea level and crisscrossed by a network of dikes and canals that disappear across the marshy terrain. The Dutch allow the various animal species who have chosen these waters as their home to live in harmony with nature. As a result, in the competition for fish between men and birds, the heron always wins. The grey heron is just one of the many guests that live here undisturbed. About a yard from the road, a crested grebe has anchored its floating nest to the reeds. Nearby, almost like chickens, a coot and its young are at home among the houses. This is something rarely seen in other countries. The wonderful birth and brooding season has arrived. The birds form pairs and start to reproduce. The white-breasted pintail with its two young geese and a wild swan waiting to go for a walk with its mate are all enjoying the mild weather and the cool water no longer frozen over. The elegant oyster catcher poking its beak into the mud in search of shells to open reminds us of something just above our heads. We are in the land of the nests of the white stork, the symbol of birth and love. At the beginning of April, in Holland's dry, scrubby countryside, the stork gathers material for a comfortable nest. The nest has a special significance. Besides acting as a flight platform and protecting the young birds during their long weaning, it also offers a pretext for the birds to form pairs. Storks are not as faithful as is generally thought. However, once united in the nest, they don't leave each other for the whole season. It's as if they said to each other, we're in the same boat. Most Dutch storks' nests were built by men near their homes. With their mute presence, these birds provide company and a sense of protection. In the silence, when you least expect it, the birds begin beating their beaks in unison.
This is one of the few vocal manifestations of these birds, and it is part of the courtship ceremony that is both a greeting and a sexual invitation. Often, at the end of the concert, the pairs render homage to each other with a slow, precise bow. The original habitat of the stork, however, is in country ponds. Despite its size, it is not feared as a predator. Though, in this case, one individual is on its guard. A weak, skinny sparrow jumps into a nest, not its own, in an attempt to steal a giant feather. As soon as the stork approaches, however, the sparrow drops its booty. The stork returns to the eggs it has laid on a muddy platform a couple of feet above the surface of the water. This is not normal behavior, and in fact, the stork has a broken wing and for the time being cannot fly. Hidden among the branches, the bird makes the best of its handicap while trying to defend itself from land predators. It certainly won't migrate this year. The parent birds alternate sitting on the eggs for between 20 and 30 days, while the other partner wanders around the fields. Taking advantage of the work of humans, it gathers a store of grubs and earthworms for its future brood. It's fascinating to watch storks as they follow the furrows of the tractor with the concentration and obstinacy of gold miners. This work can go on for hours, for the storks gather a store of food to last several days. Nearby, a group of curlews and a gull content themselves with the crumbs left by their bigger sisters. Finally, the chicks are born. All four eggs have hatched. Featherless and looking slightly monstrous, the young birds stretch their